Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for 15 Minute Food for Thought. I'm Debbie, your host today, and I have with me, as always, these fabulous women <laughs> Robin McCoy, <laughs> Angela Miller, and Kelly Armour. Hello. <laughs> and we're just going to dive in today. I want to just reiterate to those that are who have come across the videos as we're journeying, studying J.I. Packard's um, Knowing God, that we just want to make clear to you that this is just one person's perspective that we have decided to read about and um, be challenged with. And with that being said, one of my favorite speakers is the late Bishop Varad Ash. And I'm going to try to paraphrase something that he said. He said, you really haven't grown in your walk with God if your faith hasn't been challenged or if you haven't questioned why we do what we do. And so this book, I don't know about these ladies, but this book has challenged me so much to dig deeper into studying God's word. And this is why we brought this book before you all is to challenge you to go deeper and dig in the scriptures and let the scriptures come to life and enhance your walk with God. So we thank you so much for tuning in as we study knowing God. And tonight we're on chapter four, the only true God. And this was an interesting topic that has challenged me and caused me to look again. And I'm just going to read this and then I want you ladies to just go for it. Um, I looked at Exodus 20 verse 4 because this is kind of where he was coming from. And I read it in the easy read version, which says, you must not make any idols. Don't make any statues or pictures of anything up in the sky or anything on the earth or anything down in the water. And that, my friends, has challenged my thinking on why we do what we do. So, we know that images are powerful. We've talked about images in one of our other videos. I'm not sure which one, but I want to hear from you all. So somebody please share your perspective. Oh, well, go ahead, Robin, because y'all know me. Uh, I'm like, okay, no, jump no, no, I mean, I mean, I, I, what I got out of it was that it was, because uh, I, I was trying to figure this out and kind of find my twist on it. And so what really stood out to me is that it, it was really about the glory, God's glory and worship. And I was like, well, well, what, you know what I mean? And so all of a sudden I had this image of, um, cause I was wondering like, what, what could be so wrong with that? You know, other than God said, don't do it. <laughs> no. Okay. Right there. He said, don't do it. Right. Okay. <laughs> but I was trying to figure out like, well, how, how, like what? And then I had this um, in my mind's eye, like when people get married, you know, and in our society or my, my growing up, I'm thinking the bigger the diamond, the more the love, you know what I'm saying? So that big diamond ring should represent this massive amount of love and your marriage is going to last forever until I thought about Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> And I thought about all this, you know what I mean? People yeah. that get humongous diamonds and, and it's like, but that is absolutely has nothing to do with the marriage. Mm. Absolutely nothing to do with him, nothing to do with her, nothing to do with their level of intimacy, nothing to do with the quality of their commitment, their covenant, nothing. And I was like, oh, I think I'm getting this. That's why if we make these images, it, it it is absolutely nothing to do with that relationship, nothing to do with the love that the father has for me mm. and this world and the suffering and the healing and the everything. And I thought, oh, okay, I think I'm, I think I'm, I 
think I'm getting a little bit of better of understanding why not to do this. Not so much wow. why to do, but why not to do this. Wow. You know, That's so, um, but yeah. And the verse, the part of the, that stood out to me was um, page number 49. And it said, okay, glasses coming off again. It says, <laughs> the point is clear. God did not show them a visible symbol of himself, but spoke to them. Therefore, they are not now to seek visible symbols, symbols again, remember what these symbols of God, but simply to obey his word. I was like, okay, <laughs> nothing else to be said. <laughs> That's what I got. That's wow. Good. Obey wow. the word. Just obey the word. Okay. Obey. Yeah. Come on, Kelly. I'm seeing you just <laughs> bubbling over there right no, there. I'm just listening because I'm waiting on Angela. <laughs> Oh, I'm yeah. looking at your faces. Come on, come on. Uh, okay, well, I'll jump in there. I'll jump in there because I I agree with you, uh, Robin. Is just obey the word, and and I I'm with you, but all of y'all. This book really has enlightened me and teaching me because, like I said, I appreciate it that it being introduced to me because I had never heard of it, and now I've been reading up to these chapters. And it just really um, enlightened more of me understanding. And all of all of it, it, it's so much I can say, but I did look at on page 47, the portion where it says molten images and mental images. And what, what came to me and my thoughts was that God made us so we can have like a relationship with him in his image so he is grooming us to have like this certain bond with him you know so we can learn what we need to know but in his image and to me it's kind of like a double meaning like um like our spiritual thoughts but our human thoughts at the same time of what our image of god should look like you know but we still have to think, well, if God made us in his image, that means to me, we got to learn from him, which we are really learning. His image was really his mind to me, is God's mind. You know what I mean? To learn the image of him so we can, be, you know, become one with ourselves to learn about him. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's the way I picked it as if it's really our mental thoughts, our spiritual thoughts, trying to learn about God's image, but his image is really God's mind trying to teach us to get to his level of thinking. You see what I'm that's how I kind of took it. I don't know if I'm kind of explaining it right uh, to myself, well, to you all, or maybe to who's listening. But that's how I took it, because it, when that mental just stick out, stuck out to me, and it made me think, are we really, because there's so many images, you know, of what God should look like, well, especially when you're taking the Bible, you know, how his hair looked, he had the feet of brass, and things of that nature, but then you get all these other different images, that's why the idolatry is so wrong, you know, but at the same time, is that image really, you know, a mental image of is really that image is God's mind in a spiritual form. You know, that's all. what I took after that. Don't laugh, Teddy. I'm <laughs> laughing because this is so <laughs> it took it's so deep. Time. Like, you know, <laughs> it it's really how powerful <laughs> how powerful images are. And I just want to jump in there because on page 46, he talks about this is what what the what really Kelly, I'm trying to sum up what yeah. I think that you you were saying that these images that we use to represent what God looks like, and mm -hmm. the reason why um, we're not supposed to do that is because it not as 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 it represents us going into worship or to prayer or to even using things to get us to the point to pray is because on page 46, he talks about when we use things to enhance our prayer and our worship, it really conceals and obscures God's glory. Because right. if I only see him 
in one image, then I put limitations on him. And that could be so many various things. I know a lot of people grew up and we are one that grew up with the image picture of Jesus on in like this with yeah. long flowing hair. Our grandparents <laughs> had this picture on the wall. And Ooh, for a long sure. time, you know, I did. I don't know about you, Kelly, thought that, you know, that's what Jesus looked like. I did. And so, yeah. you know, closing my eyes to pray, I would always look up there, you know, in our innocence. But mm -hmm. this is why we're being challenged to dig deeper and think about why we do the things that we do because it limits who God is when we create these images because he's so vast and expanse that we can't just use one little symbol to represent him but Kelly I get what you were saying that we because we're created in his image and I like that you said it represents we represent his mind because we are the, a thought of God but we have to realize we cannot use certain things to enhance our prayer and our, um, and our worship because it really conceals his awesomeness, his right, almighty right. presence. Okay, Angela, I see. I know. I see Come on, here jump, in there. <laughs> jump in there. Well, no, I mean, all of you guys, I mean, just, I mean, it makes me think, and I'm listening to you all, and I'm thinking even more, and I'm like, I hear the word simple. We make things so complicated. I mean, the word of God, it said to listen to his word. That's, I mean, we, we have to, we just put all, like you said, the limitations on God, and so that's just freeing me, and it convicts me to say, okay, God, I don't want to ever put limitations on you, and then mm -hmm. these images which are so powerful, as you mentioned, and um, Kelly and Robin, um, that it can mislead us to think only one way that God may say, no, I want you to think this way, because he tells us his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways, you know, so, um, yeah, you know, so I was like, wow, I started thinking about pictures, the cross, the crucifixion mm -hmm. um, that people wear on their necklaces, you know, their necklace, um, just so many different things to really convict you to how to continue to grow in God and say, God, you know what, I'm sorry, if I limit you in that area, and you're trying to help me to grow in another area so I can see you in a different light. Um, so it this, this right here, this is pretty deep, because you're right, it has to break down our images mm -hmm. what we've been used to yeah and that and can I, take some time so lord help me help <laughs> us. yeah and you know one thing that you brought out he brought out in the book or uh, when you mentioned the crucifixion where it shows jesus suffering on the cross and i like that he brought out that's just one side of who Christ is and what he went through. And we can relate that to us even in this pandemic that we may have, be experiencing suffering and all that Jesus, a death, all that Jesus experienced. But when we only focus in on the crucifixion part, we miss that he was a risen savior with mm -hmm. victory and power. And so to say to whoever is listening, you might be in a season of death, um, suffering, but know that you can have victory, you can have joy again, you can have peace again, you can have life again, and there we're not limiting by our own little minds, our finite minds, what <laughs> uh, God can only do because he's so grand and so omnipotent and powerful, and he's able to change our perspective of our even our situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in so this Lord. yeah this this the only true god the only true mm. god because you know I, I know i'm the host but i don't want to keep talking but i'm so baffled i'm so baffled by this this chapter <laughs> that there's so many things that we label god that we make gods out of you know, money, our families, you name it, our jobs, but our, re our religion, our religion, our religion absolutely. in our church, our religion. Yes. I, I, it's just, I'm sorry. Cause it made me think when Robin said to break it down, just as simple of looking at somebody's ring 
or how that big somebody has this what type of car they drive and you start to treat them like they're better than you who may not have mm -hmm. that's not god and so when you talk about religion you're looking at who has the biggest church mm. and you compare that to a small church we this is breaking this down so that we can understand we set up image images and we're putting us like you're better than but god said no we're all the same right yeah. that's some deep stuff oh and I'm, I'm gonna add, and when you said he said we're all the same and then like these little images and he, but he, in that chapter, he set up the example and he said, it was Jesus. Yeah, it was Jesus. And this is how you're going to know. And he tells, he gives us as many tests, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. that, that, okay. It doesn't, are you how, compare you Jesus? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Yeah. Jesus. That's it. Yeah, and, and just like like on page four nine, Robin, you you said it too. I, all the ladies, but on page forty nine, like in that third paragraph, when it was saying about Moses, and it said the point is clear. God did not show them a visible symbol of Himself, but spoke to them. Therefore, they are now, they are not now to seek visible symbols of God, but to simply obey His word. You see what I'm saying? And Robin, you said that when you first started. It's all about what? Obeying his word. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Wow, ladies. Well, I this was can. a very I know. I'm <laughs> this was a I very challenging <laughs> chapter to read because it has caused us to dig deeper. And so to the listening audience, if you hear something that's blessing you please share these videos. And if you don't mind sharing the comments on, on the YouTube page so that, you know, we can see if this is helping you. And we're definitely glad that you have tuned in to share with us as we're speaking life and practical principles. So ladies, let's just leave with a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are the only true God. And we ask, Father, that you would breathe life over our listening audience. Father, those that don't know you, even as Robin brought out, for us to know you, we need to know Jesus because he is the expression of who you are, Lord. And you told us when we get to know him, we get to know you. And so we pray for the person that has discovered this channel, that they may come to know you, Lord Jesus, in a very real way. Even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, there's suffering, there's pain, but God, let us experience your love, your victory, and your joy. Father, we know that this season too shall pass, and we thank you for challenging us, O oh Lord, to draw closer to you. Thank you for the journey of getting to know you, and we ask for blessings on everybody who comes across this video tonight. May they get to know who you are and have a true and real relationship with you in jesus name amen, amen. Yeah. well ladies next week oh my goodness i believe robin is up yeah. and we're gonna be talking about god incarnate oh, oh man oh. come on everybody Watch give us man. a break j.i packer <laughs> but you know what we're enjoying the journey of discovering all about our God. And so I'm excited, ladies. We'll see everybody next week. We're asking that you would like, share, and subscribe. And again, if you hear something that's blessing you on any of these videos, please share it with someone that you love and that you know. Have a good night. Bye. Again, we thank you for listening to 15 Minutes Food for Thought. If you enjoyed today's topic, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our group on Facebook. Our prayer is that you were blessed today with practical principles that you can apply to your daily living. We'll see you next week.